and this means it becomes positive on the inside and negative on the outside. There is a reversal of the normal polarity. There is a reversal of the normal resting potential. And what we say is the cell is being changed from being in a state of polarization, from being polarized, and it's changed to being the other way around, where it's positive on the inside and negative on the outside. In this state, it is depolarized. So it's changed from being polarized to being depolarized. This process is called depolarization. Depolarization. So this is when the cell is at rest. This is when a nerve impulse is actually being transmitted in the nerve fiber. So here we have input, uh, nerve fiber at rest. Here we have the nerve impulse. Let's imagine the nerve impulse is traveling in this direction. Then that means that this part of the axon has not yet been reached by the nerve impulse. So that is still at the resting potential. So that is still negative on the inside and positive on the outside. So the nerve impulse is traveling down the axon as a wave of depolarization. Then in a few milliseconds time, this part here will start to depolarize. These will change to being negative. Where the nerve impulse has been, these will revert back to normal. This will become positive again. And these will become negative again. And by this means, a wave of depolarization progresses along the nerve fiber. Now in the case of saltatory transmission, as you may remember, the uh, nerve impulse don't need to do that. The nerve impulse actually bounces from one node of Ramvia to the next in saltatory transmission. But exactly the same thing is happening at the nodes of Ramvia. They are depolarizing. They are changing from being electrically negative inside and electrically positive outside to being electrically positive inside and electrically negative outside as they are actually transmitting the nervous impulse. When the impulse has moved on to the next node of Ramvia, the previous node of Ramvia will be revert, revert to the polarized resting position, the resting potential of being negative inside and positive outside. So we're describing an electrical event. That is how a nerve impulse travels down the nerve fibers. Now, from a physiological point of view, it's perhaps more important to know about how a nerve impulse is transmitted chemically. We mentioned that a nerve impulse is transmitted chemically at the synapse, at the gap between two nerves. So if we have one nerve fiber here and we have say could be a second nerve cell here if the impulse is to travel from this first nerve cell where it arrives by an electrical wave of depolarization into the next nerve cell where it can travel down the axon of the next nerve cell it must cross this gap this gap is referred to as the synaptic gap. Or occasionally, 
referred to as the synaptic cleft. So here and here the impulse is transmitted electrically. But here across the synapse it is transmitted as a chemical. So overall transmission is electrochemical. Now it might seem strange why do we have two sorts of nerve transmission in the nervous system? Well, it seems to me that one of the main reasons is that the synapse acts as a valve. It will only allow the nerve impulse to travel in one direction and not back again. Because if any one impulse could travel in every direction in the central nervous system, every time an impulse went into it, it would carry on rever reverberating around the nervous system and we would all uh, fit all of the time, which is not very productive. So they act as valves, they allow one-way transmission. So let's look at the synapse now in more detail. Now we'll draw a diagram here. What we'll first of all have is the nerve fibre coming down here before it widens out into the synaptic end plate. So we can call this the presynaptic neuron. This part is often referred to as the synaptic bulb. or the synaptic end plate. And the impulse of course is coming down the presynaptic neuron to the synapse. Now microscopically when you look at the synaptic end plate you can see that there's areas of membrane surround areas in the cell. These are referred to as synaptic vesicles. Synaptic vesicles. And these synaptic vesicles are important because they contain, they house the chemical transmitter which is required for synaptic transmission. They actually contain the transmitter chemical which is going to be released upon the arrival of the wave of depolarization in the postsynaptic neuron. So the impulse comes down here as a wave of depolarization and will cause these to be released. So these are containing transmitter chemicals, the transmitter molecules. So these are transmitter molecules or transmitter chemicals, whichever you prefer. Chemical transmitters. Now here there's a gap. Another colour. There's a gap fairly small gap. Then there is the next neuron. So let's draw this as a, another, another neuron here. It will have an axon probably leading away from it. And we'll refer to this as the neuron after the synapse. So we refer to this as the postsynaptic neuron. <coughs> 